CBS presents. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. Que la paz prevalezca sobre la tierra. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. There is so much to be thankful for in our lives on this beautiful planet. From above, it is hard to believe that people are locked in life and death struggles every day, often due to violence in the name of religion. And yet, through the darkness shines a light. May peace prevail on earth. Assalamu alaikum asma. May peace prevail on earth. Que a paz prevaleça no mundo. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail. May peace prevail in all countries on the planet. May peace prevail on Earth! Tonight, a celebration of people of all religions and cultures, helping one another and not hurting one another. Join us for an interface Christmas celebration. Welcome to the CBS Interfaith Christmas Special, coming to you from St. Gregory of Nyssa Episcopal Church in San Francisco, California. My name is William Swing, and for 27 years, I was the Episcopal Bishop here in the Bay Area, but tonight, I welcome you as the founder and president of the United Religions Initiative, URI. URI is the world's largest grassroots interfaith organization, and tonight, a few of our members, both here and around the world, will be presenting you with an unusual message. Perhaps you have been appalled by turning on television and seeing incomprehensible religious violence. Well, tonight, we want to give you a glimpse of a far larger and more powerful story of religious cooperation. This is a true story about ordinary people of various faiths around the world living peacefully together, working together, and changing their communities for the better. This is special. This is the CBS Interfaith Christmas Special. Welcome. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you. Shalom, Shanti, Salam. May peace be with you on this Christmas Eve. As Christians around the world gather to welcome the one they call the Prince of Peace, we gather this evening, people of all religions and cultures, to proclaim that peace is possible in our communities, in our country, and in our world. Tonight, let us stand together for peace. Tonight, let us pray for peace. Tonight, let us dance for peace. And tonight, let us sing together for peace. We are sending you light to heal you, to hold you. We are sending you light to hold you in love. I walk the path with you. Go slow. I'll go just like you need to go. There is no need to worry, because we are sending you light to
For centuries, people of different traditions have gathered each in their own communities to share the wisdom passed on by prophets and by teachers. There are differences between all of our traditions, sometimes significant ones, but there are similarities too. Interfaith is not about religions being the same. Interfaith is about understanding our differences, recognizing our similarities, and working together for peace and justice in our world. In this way, we live the core values that are shared by all religions, values like compassion, respect, love, and peace. Values that are necessary for sustaining life in all communities. Values that give us light, even in the darkness. We continue our celebration with an invocation of light from many of the religious and spiritual traditions of the world. I am Jewish, and I light this candle for justice. I am Christian, and I light this candle for love. I am Muslim, and I light this candle for peace. I am African American, Native American, and I light this candle for respect. We are Hindu, and we light the candle for wisdom. And peace. I am a Jain, and I'm lighting this candle for nonviolence. I am Buddhist, and I light this candle for compassion. I am Sikh, and I light this candle for generosity. I am the Hai, and I light this candle for equality. and I light this candle for cooperation. I am from the Konko faith tradition and I light this candle for gratitude. When people of other religions move into our neighborhoods, attend local schools, and work alongside us, what can we do? We can fight to keep them away or segregate ourselves from them. But certainly that will lead to a culture of suspicion and hate and ultimately religious violence. Religious diversity on our doorsteps is a critical challenge. The other alternative is to get to know people of other faiths as human beings. Seeing people as human beings makes all the difference. Take tonight. Here are people of many religions who have gotten to know each other very well over the past 15 years and have come to love each other. We show the same respect for each other's traditions, whether it is Christmas or Hanukkah or Eid or Diwali or whatever. We keep our own religious faiths, but rejoice with our friends in their faiths. And my wish for the world is that everyone can live with safety, security, and happiness. My wish for the world is love. My wish for the world is that together in diversity, we work in the care of our Mother Earth. We are blessed to be in this extraordinary space tonight. Reverend Paul Fromberg is rector of St. Gregory's. Paul, blessings to you on this Christmas Eve. Thank you and St. Gregory's community for welcoming us into this space. Well, welcome to St. Gregory of Nyssa Episcopal Church. God built this beautiful building to honor all of God's friends, and that includes you. We use this building in a lot of different ways. We use it for prayer and study, for making music and art, for feeding the hungry, but mostly we want it to inspire everyone with the message of living in friendship with God and each other. Our mission is simple. We sing and dance to Jesus' lead, which means everybody who walks through these doors is all in. Our patron, Gregory of Nyssa, taught that the only thing truly worthwhile is becoming God's friend. One way that we show this is through the icon of dancing saints, which surrounds us tonight. Each one of them was chosen not because of their perfect lives, but because each one shows what it looks like 
to live in friendship with God. We look forward to having our experiences enriched on the journey, not despite our differences, but because of them. And it's in this spirit of our common journey that we welcome URI to St. Gregory's to host this interfaith service of peace. Thank you, Paul. Tonight is Christmas Eve, and so we honor this sacred moment with a song in the spirit of Christmas from the choir and the choir's amazing musical director, Melanie Damore. No matter what our own religious or spiritual perspective, there is a beauty in the telling of the Christmas story that quickens the heart and opens a space into which new life can be born. We welcome Sari Heidenreich, who shares her own special story of Christmas peace. Merry Christmas, everyone. Throughout this year, as the months have gone by, I've celebrated many holidays with friends of different religions. I've eaten a meal for Eid al-Fitr with my Muslim brothers and sisters. I've dressed up and read the story of Esther for Purim with my Jewish friends. And now it's Christmas time, and I'm really happy that we're all here to celebrate together. My family and I are Christians, and this is a very special time of year for us as it is for many who also celebrate Jesus being born. I want to tell you about one of my favorite Christmas memories. It's about the Christmas I spent in Bethlehem. Yes, that Bethlehem, the one where Jesus was born. Thousands of years later, it is still celebrated there with all the uncontainable joy of the creator of the universe coming to visit. Every year in Bethlehem, they put up a giant Christmas tree in the downtown square. Imagine the biggest Christmas tree you can think of, covered in red and green Christmas balls and thousands of sparkling lights. Two years ago, I was there for the tree lighting on a Middle Eastern winter night. The square was packed with people. There were vendors selling warm boiled corn and sweets. Nearly 3,000 people were smushed together into that square our eyes fixed on the black shadow 
of a Christmas tree. People of many religions from all over the world, side by side, who had come to celebrate in the little town of Bethlehem. Christmas choirs sang and politicians talked, but we all came to see the tree lighting. We counted down together, shouting Arabic numbers from 10 to 1 until the dark tree turned radiant. We all stood there together, even though we were really different from each other in many ways. All of us enamored by the beauty and all of us celebrating Christmas in our own way. The light from the tree sparkled in our eye and fireworks shot into the sky from the roof of the Nativity Church and there were hugs all around. See, the story of Christmas isn't about something I can't touch or see or feel. It's about God with us. God in our hearts. God in our relationships. God coming to live next door as our neighbor. In the Christmas story, the baby Jesus wasn't born to a queen or a princess, but from an ordinary woman like your mother or mine. And Jesus wasn't born in a palace or a big fancy mansion. There's a quote on the plaque in the Nativity Church in Bethlehem. It says, when dark is the world today, this child brings the world light. In my tradition, this is what Christmas is about. It's about the divine being with us, right here, right where we are. As I work day in and day out with people of all faiths, I see the light of the divine in each face. And that light shines even brighter when I see all of us joining hands together to make the world better. More of this is my wish for the world. My wish to the world, live in peace and love and no discrimination. My wish for the world is to have peace. My wish for the world is that we should love and respect one another and see the presence of God in each and every one of us. Bethlehem, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Yes, for one night, Bethlehem is magical. But for the other 364 nights, Bethlehem is grim. Just look around at the surrounding neighbors. 365 miles away, ISIS is slaughtering people in the name of God. 500 miles away in Baghdad, worshipers in mosques are being blown up by people of competing religious sects. And locally, in Bethlehem, the tensions of daily life cause the soul to ache. No wonder people say there will never be peace in the Middle East. But you know what? That's not true. I have seen peace in the Middle East with my own eyes. I've seen Jewish, Muslim, and Christian mothers, artists, young people, diplomats, and religious leaders find each other, abide in hope with each other, and make peace with each other in the Middle East. The world might not notice, but interfaith peace is a great star shining in the dark streets of Bethlehem and throughout the Middle East. It is real, and there is hope. And here is one of our people who is a good example. The world is aflame with violence in the name of religion. The guns capture our attention. They speak the loudest. It's easy to forget there are people playing a different tune one that promotes harmony and cooperation. Janessa Wilder is an extraordinary pioneer in the global interfaith movement. This growing movement is creating pathways for religions to work together. It's tremendous that something that is used so often to, to divide people, religion, is now being used as a tool for unity 
and to promote peace. In 2006, Janessa founded the Euphrates Institute. Its goal, to find ways to bring religions in the Middle East together. Every meeting we have at a local level, there are Muslims there, there are Jews there, there are Christians there, and you're not, you know, in a lot of these occasions talking specifically about religion, you're just interacting as if you're all there with a seat at the table and you're all focused on solving the same problem. If you think that she might be naive about the challenges she faces, just listen to Janessa's story. After graduate school at Stanford University, she was recruited by the Central Intelligence Agency. Soon after 9-11, she was sent to Afghanistan. Next, she volunteered for Iraq. For the first year that I was there, I was an insurgency analyst. I was in charge of Al-Anbar province, which is you know the Sunni triangle of death that we've heard so much about. Her work took her inside the notorious Abu Ghraib prison and war-torn Fallujah. It was dangerous and often frustrating. And you're thinking, OK, we got another bad guy, but they just kept coming. I felt like I was trying to catch drops of water from a leaky faucet. Then, one day in Iraq, her life took another dramatic turn. I was down um, a few miles away from Fallujah, sitting along the Euphrates River. And I was so struck by the picture of calm and peace. I realized that the life force of the river was more powerful than the war going on. And at that moment, I decided to make a change. Janessa left the CIA and joined the interfaith movement. I see lives transformed every day. I see people's lives changed. I see progress. I see tangible results every day. On this day, Janessa, along with her young family, visited an interfaith organization headquartered in San Francisco. The United Religions Initiative, or URI, is the largest grassroots interfaith network in the world. URI supports the work of people like Janessa and hundreds of thousands of others who are joining hands in religious harmony. I think URI has the answer. I think it has a model to build peace. It's really what the world is yearning for right now. My wish for the world is so that everybody lives in peace and harmony. My wish for the world is trust and hope. Bharat Borsa Vasi Ami Sautal Sampradaya Bhukto Sara Bisser Manus Santi Te Biraj Guru Itai Amaritche. Please join us as Melody and the choir lead us in singing This Little Light of Mine.
prayer comes in many forms. It may be spoken, danced, sung, or held in the silence of our hearts. Prayer connects us to that which is greater than ourselves, connects us to other people, to the natural world in which we live and move and have our being, and to that which we may embrace as divine. The Omega Dancers will offer an invocation dance of peace. Peace, Mir, Scano, Irene. Peace, Joy, Jubilation, Justice. Peace, Salam, Shalom, Shanti, 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 Om. Peace. When the day breaks, when the sun goes down I can hear the song of the wind when the sun goes down and I pray And I look to the light when the sun goes down. I pray for. The dances that you are about to experience are sacred expressions from Indian, Polynesian, and Sufi traditions. The first dance is called the Dove of Peace. The second is O Hawaii Aina Aloha. There is deep love for our land, Hawaii. And the final dance is a Sufi prayer in which as the dancer turns in prayer, he embraces all humanity with love.
All loves are a bridge to divine love, said the Sufi prophet Rumi. I now invite Sally Mai to lead friends of many traditions in offering a taste of this love in their prayers for peace. Interfaith work invites people from different religions, spiritual expressions, and indigenous traditions to share their prayers and practices. Offering prayers across religions is a sacred action. It is holy ground that we can share. When we say prayers in our own voice and as a gift to one another, we learn more about the wisdom of different traditions. We learn to appreciate the differences and we develop respect. Tonight, let's open our hearts to receive this beautiful collection of prayers for peace from people of many faiths. A prayer for peace from the Hindu tradition. O oh God, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness unto light. Lead us from death to immortality. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace be to all. A prayer for peace from the Jain tradition. Unto all I have amity, unto none enmity. Know what the violence is the root cause of all miseries in the world. Violence, in fact, is the knot of bondage. Do not injure any living being. This is the eternal, perennial, and unalterable way of spiritual life. A prayer for peace from the Baha'i tradition. O oh, thou kind Lord, unite all. Let the religions agree and make the nations one, so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. Prayer for peace from the Sikh tradition. Within everybody is the God hidden. Within everybody is the divine light. Searching this body and by Guru's grace, one finds the divine revealed within. A prayer for peace from the Buddhist tradition. May we all be filled with loving kindness. May we all be well. May we all be at peace within ourselves and our world. May we all be happy. Words of peace from the humanist tradition. Peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. A prayer for peace from the Christian tradition. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Señor, hazme un instrumento de tu paz. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Donde haya odio, que lleve yo el amor. Where there is injury, pardon. Donde haya ofensa, que lleve el perdón. Where there is doubt, faith. Donde haya duda, que lleve la fe. Where there is despair, hope. Donde haya desesperación, esperanza. Where there is darkness, light. Donde haya oscuridad, que lleve la luz. And where there is sadness, joy. Donde haya tristeza, que lleve la alegría. Prayer for uh, peace from the Congo tradition. Eternal Divine Father and Mother, we would like to express arigato gozaimasu. Thank you a thousand times a day for your all blessings. We ask you for the forgiveness for all our mistakes and ego. We pray and strive for saving our home, the earth, a prayer for peace from the Islamic tradition. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa ilayka yarju salam. 
ادخلنا دار السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا الله you are peace from you comes peace and to you returns peace revive us with salutation of peace and lead us to your abode of peace a prayer for peace from the Jewish tradition Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hero Israel Adonai is our God Adonai is one. Let the day come when all will turn to the God of peace, when all are one single family doing the will of the Most Holy One with perfect heart. God of peace, bless us with peace. A prayer for peace from the Native American tradition. For as long as the moon shall rise, for as long as the rivers shall flow, for as long as the sun shall shine, and for as long as the grass shall grow, let us know peace. Words of peace from traditions unnamed and still to come. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. May, May peace prevail on earth. As our prayers for peace weave together the aspirations of the peoples of the planet, we invite the interfaith singers and choir to offer their blessings. May you be blessed. May
the world has lots of religions and probably doesn't need many more. But what the world desperately needs is for existing religions to get along better with each other. Be more respectful of religious differences. That's the reason that the United Religions Initiative started in the first place. URI is determined not to be another religion, but is devoted to building bridges between religions. Fifteen years ago, the United Religions Initiative was launched, and now over 700,000 people in 92 countries are members of the URI family. Someday soon, we intend to have millions and millions more. URI is not intended to put a band-aid on violent religious extremism. Ultimately, we are intent on rallying all the peace lovers of all the religions and change the course of history. Now, let's go to Nigeria and take a look. Emmanuel Ivogba works for URI as the regional coordinator for Western Africa. His office in Nigeria is located in a country struggling with poverty, lack of education, and opportunities for young people. The entire country is confronted with horrific acts of violence caused by extremist groups like Boko Haram, Ansaru, and others. Kidnapping, murder, terrorism. Amidst it all, Emmanuel works to help bring people of all religions together to tackle these issues. The heart of humanity beats the same. There is, there is truly no difference between one human being or another. The differences are artificial. We only make them up. URI regional staff, like Emmanuel, are key to URI's ability to directly confront violence and create peaceful dialogue and collaborative action by bringing diverse communities together. In a region where children are being kidnapped and murdered by terrorist groups, URI brings youth of all religions together to build peace, celebrate diversity, and lead their communities toward achieving peace. This work is extremely dangerous. And we had over 100 uh, people uh, killed here. You can see the impact of, uh, of the devastation even on the, on, the, on the roof. It was a terrible incident. Two years ago, one of Emmanuel's students was murdered by a terrorist bomb. The bombing led to violent confrontations between Christians and Muslims. In response, URI intervened and worked with Christian and Muslim leaders to negotiate terms for the creation of a peaceful marketplace where people of all faiths can sell their goods side by side. URI's direct efforts prove that peace is not only possible, it proves that peace is more powerful than the violence of religious extremism. No man is an island. We can only be successful as much as we are working in a team. Together with other interfaith groups, URI is part of a growing worldwide movement. URI is a global network of more than 750 grassroots interfaith organizations called Cooperation Circles. Cooperation Circles are beautiful groups of individuals from different faith traditions, spiritual expressions and indigenous traditions working together to create change and transform their societies and communities. My wish for the world is that all religious differences will be respected. My wish for the world is to stop bloodshed. My wish for the world is that there are no more wars and the pain that they bring. The stories of interfaith peace building that we have witnessed tonight call us both into reflection and action. In reflection, we turn inward as we consider the ways in which we might be more gentle and loving with ourselves so that peace might be born and nurtured in us. 
And in action, we evoke the golden rule that we should treat others as we would like others to treat us. This ethic appears in all traditions. And so we are called to care for one another, to work together side by side, to better our communities and our world. The work is hard. The challenges are many. But this is our calling. This is our calling. A calling beautifully described by Dr. Howard Thurman in his poem, The Work of Christmas. Dr. Thurman was an extraordinary teacher, preacher, and writer in the African-American Christian tradition. He counted among his students Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In the work of Christmas, Dr. Thurman calls us all to action in service of a more peaceful and just world. Melody Damore, tonight's musical director who composed many of the songs that we sang, joins me in sharing Dr. Thurman's words with you. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make music in the heart. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. In the world today, there are so many hard things going on. But what we can do is decide to make that pledge that we will stand. Stand by your side at your bedside, next to your shoulder, what you're going through, we're gonna go through together. So when we do this, when you feel it, you rise. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be stand by one another. People of all beliefs, all traditions, thank you for standing together this evening. And when the struggles of the world, the news of conflict and violence cast a shadow over your light, know that you are not alone, but part of a human family. People of all religions, all traditions working together for peace in our communities and in our world. 
we return for a final song, a final moment of Christmas at the end of a beautiful evening. May you go in peace on this night and may peace fill all your days. On this holy night, when Christians revere the birth of a baby who was hailed as the Prince of Peace, a big thank you to friends of other faiths who have brought their gift of graceful respect to this celebration, and a big thank you to viewers who were inquisitive about the prospect of peace amidst religious diversity. On behalf of the growing family of peace throughout the world, I thank you for watching. May peace prevail on earth. Amen.